Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day. So today, we will be wiring up our Gator 590i. We're gonna put a couple lights in the front, a couple lights in the back. We're gonna wire it for a pump, uh, for a weed sprayer, and we're gonna put a voltage gauge in it. So I have a helper here today, Steve. He's gonna help me out, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, as you can see, I already have the Gator up. That is all the wiring I pulled out of the Gator already. Uh, the previous owner had the wiring basically zip tied to the bottom of the frame rails, the exact place you don't want it. I did find a conduit uh, running all the way up the center with the factory wiring harness. So we're going to remove some floorboards and see if we can get there. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I've gone ahead and started and Steve and I have part of the floorboards out. Let me show you. So there's around 60 screws holding this floorboard in took the seat out but here's that conduit I was talking about so we're gonna try to get this rear floor out if we can and run our new wire loom right up here um, in this groove where it's protected this is your front drive shaft and this is the coolant lines from the radiator so back to more disassembly so let me give you an update of where I'm at I'm not doing as much filming on this one because uh, there's just so many bolts coming out of this thing like I showed you before I got the front outs I've measured the wire loom and here is my bundle of wires so the way I'm working it is I have a voltmeter going up here and then three switches one for front satellites one for rear satellites and run one for the pump for the sprayer now each switch needs a ground which I can daisy chain off each other then now each switch has its own inputs and then a load coming out because they're lighted switches so I have its, each switch has its own independent load wire coming up. And then the rear lights and the pump lights, I actually have to run from the load coming out of the switch all the way to the back of the vehicle. So what we're gonna do is I got the back floorboard up and I can get just far enough in there uh, without disassembling anymore to run my wire loom in conjunction with this one to keep it away from this front drive shaft. So I'm gonna go ahead and start feeding that wire through and show you where we're at next. So the hard part is done. The wires are in. Let me show you where they're at. I currently have them coming out just right here. Um, we're gonna have all the four indicators up there. They go down the dash right here through the, connect to the factory wire loom. In case you're wondering, I have plenty of room right here. It goes all the way up under and comes out here. Now, if you're wondering why I have these longer wires, these two longer wires right here are 12 gauge. They're gonna go to the rear, so we have less voltage drop for that uh, 12 volt pump in the rear lights. I also do have a new battery to go into this thing because this one's getting pretty nasty and corroded and it's not holding a good charge. So the next step in this whole process is I'm going to strip the wires and then we're gonna start putting the switches in and run power to the front. Welcome back to day two of the light install on the Gator 590i. So as you can see, the owner's already put the lights that he wants installed on the front. So let's look at these wires and what we got. So on these wires, it looks like a mess, but it's really not. So these three here are gonna be the three power wires, bring the power in. I have my grounds. And then these two are gonna be load wires from the rear, one's for the pump and one's for the lights. On the switches, I got three prong switches. So I had a ground, I got the power in, and I got the load. I also went ahead and I got a voltmeter with a USB charger. And everything's gonna be mounted over here. So the front light switch there, the rear light switch there, the USB charger there, and then he wants the pump over here. Now how am I getting all this power to where I'm getting it? Let me show you. So here's the battery. I got the side uh, partially off. And I started cleaning up some of the corrosion on here. So as the wires come out up here, we're gonna mount a second fuse box up here for all the auxiliary uh, accessories. And this fuse box is a has the negative and the positive on there. So it's kind of an all-in-one deal I really like. The other thing we're gonna install is a stinger switch. This is just a giant uh, 80 amp solenoid. Essentially, I have one on my Pioneer. We're never gonna use that much power, but you'll have a hot wire come in, hot wire go out to the fuse block. These two right here 
are what activates this. So I'm gonna use a fuse tap, put it in the factory box on the accessory so when the key is on, it'll activate this. And by using the stinger switch, that won't let one of the grandkids or for some reason somebody hitting a switch to turn on the lights and kill the batteries. Even though they're all LED and this is a big battery, there's no reason to have that. And especially with like that weed sprayer constantly priming the pump. So let's go ahead and get this install started. So as I pop the hood, let me show you the wires are. Here's the wires for the lights that the uh, owner wants. So you can see there's not a lot left, but this is good right here because this is in the folded down position. So we're gonna attach these wires together and run it up basically with the factory harness up into the dash. And that's gonna be the really easy install for the front lights. So after we get the front lights installed, then we're gonna go ahead and move our way to the back. Then finally we'll do the fuse box and the stinger switch. So I have the front lights and switches wired up and let me show you how I did it. The front lights, I ran them together and ran them up all the way, basically following the factory wiring harness, and here it is, up underneath the dash. And from there, I've installed all my switches. So this will be for my pump, my front lights, the rear lights, and here's your voltmeter with your USB power port. So all the wires that I ran to the switches and to the front all terminate here. So let me show you what these look like. So these shorter wires right here will go to the fuse box. These wires right here are the actual load wires. So these are running all the way up to the switches in the front, down, and I'll continue running them out the back right here. So the hard part is done, running the wires and getting the switches wired up appropriately. Remember I have a three prong switch, which has a ground, a power in, and a load out. Each switch is rated at 20 amps. So the next thing I need to do is I need to get the rear lights mounted and wired up. For those of you wondering how I built the bracket, it's really simple. I use a piece of aluminum angle iron and let me show you. It's right here. It's two by two, eighth inch thick aluminum angle iron so it doesn't corrode or rust. But if I get hit hard enough, it'll give. I just drilled out these two holes are half inch, which is just a little bit extra play. Then I went right here on the bed and unbolted these. These are 15 millimeter inside and out. And then you just put your wrench in there. You'll just slide your ratchet in here. And I didn't wedge it between the pieces, I put it on the back side. And that's pretty rigid. So if you got a better idea on where to mount these, leave a comment in the description below. I'm always looking for better places. I know this will get covered in dirt or mud, but the owner of this really isn't gonna off-road it too much. Like I said, just take grandkids for a ride. So right here is our factory fuse box. And I used a fuse tap off the fuel pump to make sure that this thing only runs when the key is on. The fuse tap down to the stinger relay. From there, it goes to our fuse box. Our fuse box only has power when the key is on on the ignition. That's why I went off the fuel pump. I'm only running three accessories off this fuse box, even though I can run six. I have the front lights, the rear lights, and then the pump for the sprayer. This is the cord to the pump for the sprayer. The owner wants to keep it right here in this compartment there. So what I'll end up doing is drilling the hole in the part compartment and just running this wire through right there. The wires going to the rear lights actually are zip tied here. They actually follow the factory wired harness. The wires going to the back light. It's this right here. I came up underneath following the factory wired harness, went underneath the throttle, over across the way. I got one more zip tie to install over there. Came over down the frame rail. And now for the moment of truth, we'll turn the key to the on position. You're gonna feel pump prime. So we turn on our rear lights right there. And turn on the headlights, the grill lights, and the water pump, even though that's not hooked up. We walk around. And there's the front lights. And there's the rear lights. And there you have it. That's how I ran the wiring on the Gator 590i. I went right up the factory wiring harness in my own wire loom. I put my own fuse box and my own relay that activates with the key on. I have front lights, rear lights, and a plug for a 12 volt outlet for a weed sprayer that we're gonna use. If you have a better way of doing this without buying a factory wiring harness, let us know in the comments below. I'm sure people are always wondering. 
Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up if you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.